डॉक्टर महेश कल्याण शेट्टी असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन दिस सेशन विल डिस्कस अबाउट द एनालिसिस ऑफ नॉन स्वे फ्रेम यूजिंग स्टिफनेस मेथड द लर्निंग आउटकम विल बी एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू एनालाइज एंड ड्रॉ बेंडिंग मोमेंट डायग्राम ऑफ नॉन स्वे फ्रेम यूजिंग स्टिफनेस मेथड let us consider one frame subjected to a loading as shown in figure of course it is a non sway frame since we have a perfect symmetry about the support perfect symmetry of loading and geometry so therefore this is a non sway frame we are aware that the stiffness equation is ad equal to ADL plus S into D, where AD is the action force in the direction of deformations in the original structure. ADL is an action force in the direction of deformations due to loading in kinematically determinate structure. S is the stiffness matrix, and uh, D is the deformation matrix. So let us find all these matrices separately, and then we shall. substitute all the matrices in this equation so that the unknown deformations can be obtained the first thing is to find the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for that we need to assume the deform shape so this is how the beam in, uh, the frame is likely to deform the deform shape is shown by a red dotted line so where the rotation is possible at b and at c therefore the degree of kinematic indeterminacy is 2 and uh, let us consider d1 as theta b and we consider theta b clockwise and theta 2 as theta d2 as theta c we can consider this as anti clockwise then we will find uh, ad matrix so ad matrix is uh, nothing but it is a, a force in the direction of the redundant in the original structure so since we have uh, theta b and theta c as redundant and we don't have any force in the direction of theta b and theta c in the structure therefore both the values are zero then we shall find the adl matrix so adl is uh, nothing but it's an axial action force in the direction of deformation in the direction of deformation in the kinematically determinate structure so for that you have to make all the spans fixed and due to loading we have to find the fixed end moments so these are the fixed end moments produced so adl1 is the force in the direction of first redundant and adl2 is the force in the direction of second redundant and uh, the fixed end moment is because of the udl as well as because of the point load at the center and it is calculated as minus 90 that is adl1 and adl2 is min minus 90 and when we are uh, considering this moment we shall consider it positive if the moments are in the direction of rotation otherwise it is negative so from the diagram it is clear that adl1 is opposite to the assumed direction adl2 also is opposite to the assumed direction therefore both the values are negative so this will be a adl matrix before we proceed further let us take a review questions the first one is fm of beam subjected to point load at the center of span is and four options are given and the second question is sway in the frame produces the fixed end moment of four options are given So these are the answers. The fixed end moment of beam subjected to point load at the center is, of course, P L by eight, and sway in the frame due to uh, sway in the frame produces the fixed end moment of six C R delta by L square. So let us proceed further with the problem. Now we shall find the stiffness matrix. Now for finding the stiffness matrix, we have to apply unit rotation in the direction of redundants one by one. 
So let us apply the unit rotation in the direction of first redundant that is theta b. So this will this is how the rotation is applied at b in clockwise direction and the moment required to cause this uh, rotation is 4 a by l and uh, these coefficients are s11 r stands for right span l stands for left span and the carry over is taking place from b to c therefore the moment at c will be 2 a by l which is half of 4 a by l and this will be a coefficient s21 so s11 is a summation of left and right component and which is calculated as 1.333 ei and s21 is minus so again uh, this negative sign is because the moment at c is clockwise and the rotation at c we have assumed as anti clockwise therefore it is minus 0.333 ei so this gives me the first column of the matrix then the second action is applying the unit rotation in the direction of theta c. So anti clockwise rotation I have to give at c. So you can see at c the moments are applied to produce the anti clockwise rotation. So the moment required is 4 a by l again and half the moment is transferred from c to b as a carry over and that is 2 a by l. So uh, this coefficient is S12 because it is in the direction of first redundant due to second action and S22 that is a, a coefficient in the direction of second redundant due to second action there are two components again left component and right component and all these values are determined with their proper sign. S12 is again negative because uh, moment at B is anti clockwise and the rotation at B we assumed as clockwise. Then S22 is the summation of left and right component and it works out to be 1.333 EI. So this gives me a second column of the matrix and both the actions are over. So this will be the stiffness matrix EI in bracket 1.333 minus 0.333 and in the second row minus 0.333 and 1.333. After getting the stiffness matrix now we shall write the stiffness equation ad equal to adl plus s into d so let us substitute all the values here we know ad 0 0 then adl matrix so we determine that we have to substitute here the stiffness matrix also we determine that i have substituted here and d1 d2 are the deformation matrix so after solving this we will get d1 that is theta b as 90 upon ei and d2 that is theta c as 90 upon ei and both the values we get positive it means that our assumption regarding theta b and theta c are correct. So theta b is clockwise in nature and theta c is anti clockwise in nature. Once we get the deformations the next thing is to find the end moments using slope deflection equations. So we have to convert these rotations to moments and for that we take a help of slope deflection equation. So for example if I consider MAB then the slope deflection equation will be MAB equal to FEMAB plus 2 EI by L in bracket 2 times theta A plus theta B minus 3 delta by L. So FEMAB is 0 then remaining values are substituted theta A is also 0 length of that member AB is 6 meter that is substituted here and theta B just now we calculated 90 upon EI clockwise therefore it is taken as positive and we do not have any sway here otherwise this delta would have been present so therefore it is 0. So in this way MAB works out to be 30 kilo Newton meter. In the same way we can write the equation for MBA and substitute the values and we get this MBA as 60 kilo Newton meter and in this uh, slope deflection equation we use the sign convention that all the clockwise moments and rotations are considered positive and anti clockwise moments and rotations are considered negative. With the same convention we determine the remaining moments MBC minus 60 of course it will be minus 60 since we have MBA 60 therefore MBC has to be minus 60. MCB is plus 60 
and m c d is minus 60 and m d c is minus 60 kilo newton meter and with this uh, values we can draw the free body diagram so uh, uh, all the moments so are shown here at the joint so the positive value is represented by a clockwise moment and negative value is represented by uh, anti clockwise moment so once we get the free body diagram then we can develop the bending moment diagram so this is a bending moment diagram which is shown here after superimposition these are the references used for this presentation thank you thank you very much